filled with artisan foods and finds from local Texas producers. Wagyu steaks, seafood, honey, small batch ice cream, hill country wines, and a whole state load more. Really into Texas. Really into food. Shop now at centralmarket.com. It's better in the sun. Because a pool indoors is just an overflowing bathtub. With new Coppertone Complete's multi-benefit sunscreen for the whole family, you can discover it's great outdoors. Use and reapply as directed. Is stuck in the uh, oven. Uh, he started doing many techniques. He hit the quan to the uh, beat. Then uh, he break danced on the concrete. Did a moonwalk down the uh, street. Uh, so many chicks started coming his way. way. He was nervous, didn't know what to say. He's hey. a sheep in new, not a stray. Uh, a fluffy boy that wants to okay. play. Said, Hi, my name is Keems. I know I look normal. It's not as it seems. I'm actually an ironic doge meme. I'm famous as and I got lots of green. Hey, got big money like a bird, sir. He hit second base, wanna go first. Further. Got really hungry for Keem's burger Floated in the pool with a life preserver Keem's know how to pull the thick hose He hits a hee hee on his tiptoes And mentions his 10 mil he's got in crypto Picks up the chicks and whips the hey. pins home Dance all, all night, night, night In the club with vodka and Sprite, Sprite, Sprite I know who to invite, vibe, vibe To make the vibe feel right, right, right Yeah, we get City, uh, uh, in the car with two bad ditties, uh,
Why you worry about me? Don't need a flex on a gram. I stay low key. It's time to go out. Been working all week. She said she want to come ride, so I give her the keys. We change it up. Got disco trending. I make moves while y'all pretending. I don't see this night ending. So move your feet. I'm with you, girl, and we move them sheets. I keep going, money on repeat. I'm Billy, and I stay hot. You chilly. I got bars like Selly. Make that Millie. Cars from overseas. I'ma need that sauce with my chicken wings. Let the beat ride. We gon' dance until the sun rise. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's that good feeling. Show me your winning. I stop watching. Now she knows I'm winning. Show me your with it, iced out teeth, she loves when I'm grinning. Man, I'm feeling like Johnny since how I fucked your mom and I stole your bitch. I got a pocket full of cash and a handful of ass. I be dressing like a dad, they don't know that I'm rich. Hey, like hey, fuck it, make love it, super bad how I... Welcome back to the Beating Dream stream for our Thursday evening torch. Thursday tutorial embellished bezel pendant. Um, this is one of my favorite types of projects because it actually um, allows you to sort of meld your... What the world? What, what the what? Seriously? What is going on with that? Um, I'm going to assume that I still have sound because no one's told me that I don't yet. Um, but yep, there's the... There's the thing there, and focus on me, please, camera. Maybe focus on my dirty finger. There we go. Sorry, I did not realize that was there. Okay, there we go. All right, so as long as you can hear me, it's all good. Hi, Megan and Ace. So this is one of my favorite types of projects, thanks, Sharon, because um, it, it blends fabrication and wire wrapping and and those are my two of my favorite things to do so it's always loads of fun when i can find a project that uses both of them and it's also um it's kind of a cheat in a way um because i'm sure that most of you who do wire wrapping have seen just those amazing you know excuse me just beautiful structural wire wraps with all the detail and the fact of the matter is that i'm impatient I am time challenged, I am patience challenged, and I, I don't have this the mental focus to, to put into something like that. So, so doing something like this where you're actually doing a soldered setting and then embellishing it with wire wrapping is kind of a really good way to just sort of jump that gap of I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna make the structure in a way that is quicker and easier for me, and then I'm gonna embellish it. So what do we need as far as tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial, you are going to need a piece of sheet silver and a cabochon. You need your piece of sheet silver to be slightly bigger than your cabochon. It doesn't need to be a whole lot bigger, but you are going to need about a millimeter of border on um, all sides, so that, that should work the size that I have here. You're going to need a cabochon. I've got this really cool Montana Agate cabochon that I've been wanting to do something with for a while. You're going to need some bezel strip. I like fine silver bezel strip because you don't have to worry so much about it oxidizing. And you need to make sure that your bezel strip is tall enough that it's going to come up and over the curve of your stone because that's what we're going to roll over to actually get our setting. You're going to need a piece of 18 gauge sterling silver wire, 4 to 6 inches long. Should work just fine. For that and then you're going to need also so that's for the fabrication part and then for the wire wrapping part you're gonna need one teardrop bead so I've got this lovely garnet teardrop you're gonna need just a few and of course all of these are tied together so I have four strands but I really only need like 20 um, three or four millimeter uh, rounder rondelle beads and then you're gonna need some 26 gauge wire I'm going to be using 26 gold filled because I like mixing my metals and you're going to need probably about two to three feet of that. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry y'all. I completely just inhaled my own saliva. That's super awesome. 
so anyway, continuing on. As far as tools go, you're going to need all of your fabrication soldering tools, so that's um, including but not limited to torch, uh, soldering surface, pickle in a pickle pot, flux, and a brush with which to apply your flux, which I'm pretty sure I have somewhere in here. Yes, you are a flux brush. flux and a flux brush. Um, you are also going to need solder, of course, for this. And I'm going to be doing this with easy solder. If I can find any solder. Um, but I'm going to be doing the project with easy solder. Um, a solder pick is always helpful as our tweezers. You are going to need a file just for your bezel. Okay, you're not really going to need to find much of anything else tonight, which I'm sure has some of you all jumping for joy. There's a tweezers. Still, however, looking for solder. Like, I swear I just had some giant pieces of solder, and now they are, seem to have just disappeared into the ether. I mean, I find beads, cabochons, all kinds of interesting, interesting things in there. None of them, unfortunately, happen to be solder. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to run grab a little bit of solder in a minute. Um... Hi, Corvus! So yeah, I'm, I am going to need some easy solder, which like I said, seems to have um, done disappeared itself from my work surface, so I'll go grab some of that in a minute. Um, and then, uh, in addition to all of your basic fabrication tools, so again, torch soldering surface flux, pickle, pickle pot, file, you're going to need um, some 320 grit sandpaper, some fine steel wool, you are going to need a metal shears as well. Also going to need a sharpie and probably a couple of other things that I've forgotten, which I will tell you about when I remember what I forgot. But real quick, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go grab that solder that I forgot to bring over here. So um, everyone, talk amongst yourselves, hang out with Ziggy, and I'll be right back. All right, I have returned with solder. Just gonna make this whole process a lot easier. And Lori, I'm so sorry that you got stuck doing that today. That's just awful. Just so terrible. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my bezel strip. So this is, I believe, 3 16th. Yeah, yeah hmm. Why does she gotta do me like that? Smoke pastrami. Oh, it's not fair. Uh, yeah, I know. I went out for a barbecue not that long ago and I had brisket, and I was like, now all I want is brisket all the time. And I'm really trying to tell myself I don't need to buy a smoker to make my own brisket. I can just go out for barbecue anytime I want. I live in Dallas. There's about 8,000 barbecue places. 
in Dallas. I have time to get there. Streaming live from Beating Dreams way north. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking my bezel strip and forming it around my stone. So since this isn't a circle, I can't use a mandrel or anything to form it. I do have to just um, form it around the stone, which is a little bit awkward since um, bezel strip, like most wires, likes to spring up. Um, I will say it's a little more wasteful, but it's way easier if you do go ahead and just cut off a piece from your coil of bezel strip because um, trying to work with this like big end piece is just a real pain in the neck. Um, grab a chain nose pliers and just grab it at the end make sure that it's nice and straight especially if you're using the fine silver bezel strip it should be super super easy to <laughs> to straighten and then I'm just going to wrap it around my stone Since it's fine silver, again, it bends really easily, she says. Hold on. I know, it is kind of a pill-shaped stone. I got this a while back at the Montana Agate, and I'm really excited about... I wasn't quite sure what I... I didn't know if I wanted to, like, make it into a ring, like an east-west really wide ring, but I think it's going to look really cool in this project. Okay, so... You want a tight fit, which that is definitely not, but I'm going to try and fix that after I get this end bent around. And the one thing that you've got to be really careful of when you're using a wide bezel strip like this is that you don't kind of get it bent inwards. Like, don't forget your stone has to drop in through that bezel from the top. You can't put it in from the bottom because there's going to be metal there. So you've got to make sure that it's it's not, you know, angled over your stone. Um, so one trick I have um, that I like to do when I have um, stones like this that are a little bit difficult is I like to take my bench block, which is under my box, just don't even ask, and um, take my piece and just sort of roll it on my bench block and that'll usually do a fairly decent job see of forming that to my stone and I'm gonna try and do the same thing up here so this is all extra so that can come off and I'm just gonna hold everything and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna roll it on my bench block Sometimes it's a two-hand job. Yeah, see? Not perfect, but see how much better that's fitting? Now there's not so much airspace, which is good. Okay, and now I'm going to make myself a cut line. So you've got your two ends of your bezel strip that are overlapping right here, and obviously that's not going to work. So I'm just going to find something I can scribe with. In this case, it's my tweezers. I'm just going to scribe myself a line right there and then I'm going to use my shears to just snip I don't want to do my best to snip perpendicular to the sides of my bezel so that I get a straight cut. Now comes the filing the only filing I have to do. Uh, everyone okay over there? Okay good it's okay Okay, so this is the only filing we're going to have to do tonight. It shouldn't take very long. Um, so we just need to make sure that we um, flush up these edges. So if you did a good job cutting with your shears, then it should only take a couple, three passes with your file to get that to the point where you can take these two and tension fit them. Like so. 
so that we can solder them. So now I'm going to make my um, soldering stack again. Okay, so now I'm going to solder my bezel together and I'm going to use my easy solder for that. So I just need to cut myself a very small piece of easy solder. Um, and when I say very small, I really do mean very small. Okay, it's that tiny little bit right there. I'm going to take my flux, and you don't really need to flux your bezel because it's fine silver, but I usually do anyway. Um, and then I'm going to take my solder, I'm going to set it underneath my bezel and I'm going to set the seam right on top of that bezel. Okay, so it's a little hard to see on camera, but... Oh, what did you do, Corvus? I mean, yes, as a former dancer, I can give you a number of, of remedies for muscle pain. Tiger bomb! Yeah, but depending on what you did, um, ice might be better or heat might be better. So please regale us with the story of how did you hurt yourself, Corvus? Um, okay, so there's my solder, there's my joint. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat that. Um, don't forget if you're not familiar with um, my five point soldering safety lecture, aka how to solder safely or relatively safely in your own home or in a community workspace, make sure you go ahead and check that out before you're lighting any kind of fires or flames in your work area. You can um, find that if you type exclamation point S safety in the Twitch chat, that'll take you to a link to that video. My torch is empty. Okay, so this is why, so I have students who get mad at me because I will crank my torches really hard down and off when I am, um, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, when I put them away. And the, the problem is when I don't do that, they'll just slowly leak butane, which is scary in a number of ways. We're just not going to talk about all that. Um, and so the next time I go to use them, they be empty. But yes, Corvus Megan, being a medical professional is correct. Um, rest, ice, um, elevation. They always taught us rice in dance class, rest, ice, compression, elevation, but compression's not always the best. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with ice for sure. Um, so rest, ice, elevation. So make sure you're sitting up and not laying down. Welcome to the beating dreams. We've had lots of injuries stream. And now we're going to solder this thing together. <laughs> Jewelry tried to kill you. Um, I don't know what to do about that Corvus. I mean, maybe there's some kind of sage. Uh, treatment that you can do on your jewelry? Can, can you just like bury it in sage so it stops trying to murder you? Okay, so that was it. So one of the reasons that I like um, putting the solder underneath the, um, the piece is that when the solder flows, you can literally see the piece drop down. And for me, that's really helpful having that motion cue um, to know when the solder is flowed. Now, I'm going to take this um, off my uh, thingy jingy soldering board and let it cool for a minute and then I'm going to reshape it around my stone because the next thing I'm going to do is solder it down. And once you've soldered it down, that's the shape it is. Okay, so it's mostly cool enough to touch. So now I'm just going to take that and I'm going to press that down over my stone. Make sure that I have a good fit. And the best way, I, in my opinion, the best way to find out if you have a good fit is to actually look at the bottom of your bezel. And so mine fits pretty well. The top looks like it's loose, but I think what's actually the problem is it's a little bit tall. So I think I'm going to wind up soldering that down a bit. But for now, I've got a good shape on the bottom. So I'm going to real, real carefully pop my stone out. I'm going to be putting it in here one more time before I solder it down though. 
and I'm going to sand this a little bit first. So I'm going to carefully pop my stone out. Come on, out, out, damn spot, out, I say. Not that far out. And then I'm going to grab some sandpaper and set that flat on my work surface, put my bezel down, put my fingers on it to brace it, and just run that back and forth on the sandpaper to sand the bottom. That's going to help flatten that out so I can get good contact with the sheet metal when I'm soldering my bezel. The stone magnet is actually a Montana agate. I mean, you could be immortal, still Corvus, just with a hurt shoulder. So what I've done is I've just flattened out the bottom of that. I'm going to solder it down, and then I'm going to um, sand down the top of it to make it a little bit less tall. So I've got my piece of silver. So for those of you who have been hanging out on the Beating Dream stream for a while, this should be, you know, hopefully somewhat familiar with you, because this, this is just a basic bezel setting with a little bit of, you know, foufoura that goes on after it's done. So I'm going to take the sanded edge, so I've fluxed my entire piece of sheet silver. I'm going to put the sanded edge of my setting down. I'm going to make sure, like I said, I want a millimeter or so of border around my entire um, setting, so I want to make sure that I don't you know, get it pushed too far over to one side. Because for this particular project, I'd need just a little bit of border around. Not a lot, but just enough to kind of anchor that wire. Okay, so there's my bezel. Now I'm going to take um, more of my easy solder, and this time I'm going to cut four pieces of it. Slightly bigger. So the last one was about a sixteenth. These are closer to an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to use my tweezers to position these inside my bezel so that they are touching the spot where my bezel meets that silver back plate. And make sure when you're doing that that you don't move it on your back plate once again to the to the point where you can't get the border that you need. All right, so now we're going to solder our back plate down or sorry, bezel down to our back plate. So once again, turn on the torch. And I'm going to drop a solder pick in my right hand, my torch in my left hand, just in case I need to press anything or tap anything. And I'm just going to heat the whole thing. Be careful about your bezel, okay? Try to focus your heat on the back plate and the joint rather than the bezel because the bezel is going to have a tendency to melt if you heat it too much. what you're looking for is you're looking for the solder to melt and flow along the seam and um, what we typically call that when we are metal slipping is zipping. So we're going to try and zip the solder. Alright, well it flowed. And unfortunately it wasn't close enough so it flowed and it kind of puddled. Now in instances like that sometimes you can sort of move it but of course you don't want to move your piece. So I'm just going to see, this is why I always use four pieces. Even though people who are way better at this than me can zip with one piece of solder, I ain't that good. So I always like my backup pieces. So this one flowed, but it didn't zip because it wasn't actually contacting the wall of my bezel. So let's try some of these other guys. being super stubborn tonight. That's really great, guys. Appreciate that. Ah, okay, there we go. Finally, some zippage. So can you, 
you you may or may not be able to because it's kind of running around the outside but there we go see so if you can just get one piece to behave you literally can just pull it around the whole piece with the heat because of course solder does flow towards heat so i managed to get so you can tell you that you see that little border like that very little border that's the solder and it, so I've zipped everything except for this one section here. So I'm just going to see if I can reheat it and, and pull it down this side right here. I'm going to have to give up and add another piece of solder and maybe a little bit more flux. Ah, nope. See, so come to the Beating Dream Stream for fiery projects and also advice as to what to do. When you, t when you pulled your shoulder because your ring caught on the refrigerator. Seriously, folks. No one else, nowhere else but here. It's true. Yes, just in time for the flambe. So where we're at right now is I've got most of this bezel zipped out except for this one side which is being difficult. So I'm going to see, um, I added a, a little bit more flux and another piece of solder. We're going to see if I can get that to zip. I might have to uh, uh, pickle it because the metal is getting a little dirty, but we'll see. So first thing I need to do is just make sure everything gets nice and hot again. I want to make sure all that new flux that I put on gets clear. I want to make sure that that solder is actually contacting where I need it to be. And then we're just going to heat and hope. Aha! There we go. Okay, do you... Oh my god, I had it off camera. That's horrifying because that was so cool all right so it's zipped right there <laughs> sorry y'all fail so much fail okay but I did manage to zip that down to the back piece so my bezel is now officially soldered on there and um, now I'm gonna let it cool I'm gonna cut it out and then I'm gonna solder on my piece of 18 gauge wire again if you're too impatient to let it cool and you remembered to bring a little bit of water um, out in a little cup you can quench this you can actually just dunk it in the water and it will immediately become cool enough to touch but somehow no matter what I do I can never manage to remember that oh well someday So let's see, while I'm waiting for this to cool, a um, couple of things. So tomorrow here on the Beating Dream stream um, is our Zoom Crafty Cocktail time. That means you will not find us on Facebook. You will not find us on Twitch. You'll find us on Zoom, um, hanging out and doing fun crafty projects. That is correct, right? Yes. Okay. Which means I need to go do the... Right. But did I, I, I might have, no, never mind. We're good. I just have my weeks confused. So yeah, Zoom tomorrow. Um, so Heather will send the Zoom email with the credentials. And if you want to hang out with us uh, and laugh and joke and have free crafting time, that would be awesome. Saturday evening, 
is going to be our honeycomb bracelet tutorial followed by a live merchandise sale and um, next week is our memorial week sale week that means next week we will not be doing any tutorials we ha will have sales every night next week starting on Wednesday um, so Wednesday Thursday Friday and Saturday are all gonna be sales next week um, we are for anybody who's local who's listening beating dreams for the first time in 15 years is going to be closed on Memorial Day Monday okay we will not be here on Monday we will not be on stream we will not be in the store so um, go enjoy your cookouts and everything um, and, and do not plan to come to the bead store on Memorial Day because we will not be around okay so now that this is cool what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a sharpie and this is a fat sharpie and I'm just gonna um, draw around my bezel and it's gonna that's just gonna give me since the tip of my sharpie is approximately one millimeter makes about a one millimeter line it's gonna give me just a bit of a guide for that one millimeter and then I'm gonna take my metal shears I'm just going to cut around the outside of my Sharpie line. Yes, it was so... <laughs> it's always good to see people. It's true. Do do do. Eh. Okay, so there we go. So that is my, well, it's only blue on the piece corvus because I, I drew a line with a Sharpie to kind of give me a guide for cutting about one millimeter around the bezel. So the blue is gonna go away in just a minute. Okay, now I'm going to solder on my piece of 18 gauge wire. And it's actually gonna work way better for the piece if I solder it, instead of soldering it on top of this back piece, if I can actually solder it in the metal so what that means is I'm going to find approximately okay well I'm going to figure out what's going to be the top and what's going to be the bottom that's going to be the top that's going to be the bottom so at the top I'm going to find the center and I'm just going to cut with my shears two little nips that are gonna go all the way down to my bezel. So it's just one little nip. And actually my shears aren't doing it, so we're gonna do that with my wire cutters instead. And then I'm just gonna use my um, round nose pliers to just kind of bump that back a bit so that I can get that wire a little bit more level with the top of my bezel. Then I'm gonna find my 18 gauge wire. I'm gonna straighten it out. And I'm just gonna lay it on there. And a little bit of flux. A small piece of easy starter. Hey Marley! Welcome in! <laughs> hey look! Oh my god. Love the cat emotes. Those are awesome! Okay, so I've got a little bit of solder there. 
and I'm just going to heat until that solder flows. Alright, so it flowed. I just want to make sure that it actually flows and joins everything together. Unfortunately, that was not what I wanted. That was me melting it. So, that's okay. That's why we make these pieces extra long. So, we're just going to go ahead and pretend that melting thing never happened. We're going to try this again. Did not cut that off short enough. Shocking me, folks, that was hot. Alright, so... So one of my problems here is I'm trying to do this um, quick and dirty because I'm running over time already and I'm not doing a good job of heating the whole piece which is why I melted that wire, okay? You gotta heat everything or the solder's not gonna flow onto it. Just isn't. Gosh darn it, really? And sometimes your metal's just a pain in the ass which is what mine's doing right now. I did not take it off, uh, Lori, I just bent it back a little bit, so I made just kind of a little depression, which I'm attempting to solder this into. And it is being a little pain in my butt. I really don't want to melt my bezel. I'm going to put a little bit more solder on there and hope that fixes the problem and a little more flux. This is the part of the piece for me where it's like you start to get really emotionally invested. It's like this is the le literally the last soldering step before I get to pickle it and then, you know, set my stone and do the wire wrapping. So it's like, this is where I'm like, no, don't you dare screw up. Not at this point. Ah, okay, finally. Alright, so that should conclude the soldering portion of my piece, alright? So I've got my bezel soldered onto my 18 gauge wire. Now that is going to go into the pickle. So while that's pickling, let's talk for just a sec about what pickle is and what it does. Pickle is a weak acid solution. What it's going to do is it's going to clean all that uh, fire scale and crud off my metal so that I can go ahead and buff it and um, make it pretty for my wire wrapping. I use citric acid pickle, that's my fave, because it doesn't off-gas any harmful fumes. It's pretty inexpensive, it's very easy to use. Um, the industry standard is something called Sparex, um, which is a little bit harsher than citric acid. It definitely works quicker, but citric acid works pretty quickly. Also, it would be really nice if that stupid cord would stay behind the camera instead of in front. <laughs> Unfortunately, Corvus, there's no there's no hitting of anything in tonight's project. I'm sorry, it is a percussion percussion free project. I apologize. Also, at some point, I'm gonna go have to locate my prong pusher because. 
my graver is there, but my prong pusher is not. So I'm going to need that to set my stone. Since I'm waiting for my thing to pickle, um, anyway, I'm going to go grab that in a minute. But Megan did have a really good question. If you're at home, how do you dispose of the pickle? So what you really should do is you don't have to mix a new batch of pickle for every project that you do. So I keep mine in a, in a crock pot. It's just a cheapy crock pot from Target. So when I'm done with my work session, I'll unplug it, put the lid on, and then I can store it. Next time I need to use it, I'll just heat it up again. And typically when you're buying pickle, it's um, going to be in like granules or powder that she'll dissolve in water in a particular ratio. Usually your jar or bottle will tell you what that is. Once your pickle starts turning blue, that means that it is saturated with copper molecules and that means it's going to stop working soon. So at that point, what you need to do is take your pickle, neutralize it with baking soda because pickle's an acid, so baking soda will render it neutral. Um, and then just store it in a jug, like a, you know, a gallon jug from milk or windshield washer fluid or whatever. Um, if you've neutralized it properly in the way that you know that it's neutral is you, when you dump baking soda, keep dumping baking soda into it, it stops fizzing. Okay, when it stops fizzing, then it's neutral. Pour it in your jug. Once your jug is full, take it to your community's hazardous waste disposal facility. Um, you really shouldn't dump pickle down the toilet. Now, have I ever done it in my career? I have more than once, but it's really not good for the water supply. So, you know, just pick up that good environmental karma and dispose of your pickle properly. And, and I, I promise that, you know, hopefully you won't come back as a cockroach. Sorry, that was not where I was expecting that to go. And yet that's where it went. So I am now going to go find my prong pusher. Again, I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to extricate my piece from the pickle because it is cleaned up. So what you want to see um, that tells you it's time to take your piece out of the pickle is you want most, if not all, of the black junk on your piece to be gone. Now, for my piece, since my stone is pretty much opaque, the black stuff on the inside doesn't so much matter. Um, but if I weren't on stream, if I were, you know, if I had all the time in the world, what I probably would have done is I would have thrown this in the pickle, I would have gone and worked on another project. So, you know, it could stand a little bit more time in the pickle, but for the sake of time on the stream, I am going to um, say that it is ready to go. So now, remember I said I wanted to sand this bezel down a bit. I want to make it shorter. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to put it on that sandpaper and I'm just going to move that back and forth on my sandpaper until I've taken off a little of the height of that bezel. The reason that I want to take that bezel down in height is I don't want it to cover so much of my stone. I'm not going to put my stone in my bezel because I don't have any dental floss handy. Alright, a little, just a little bit more, and that should be good. Alright, while I have my sandpaper out, I'm also going to take a minute and I'm going to sand the edges of my bezel and that I'm just taking my sandpaper around and again this is a 320 grit 
And then I'm going to switch out my sandpaper for some fine steel wool. This is quadruple zero steel wool and I'm going to use that to do two things. First of all, I'm going to use that to buff the edges and second of all, I'm going to use that to buff up the surface of my piece so that it has a nice shine to it. Now, if I had, again, an overabundance of time, what I would do with this instead of buffing it by hand is I would throw it in my tumbler, which would polish it up to a nice shiny silver without me having really to put forth any effort. But since I do want to get this done sometime, you know, in a reasonable amount of time, I'm going to go ahead and do the steel wool. Um, the back is where you can really see that I um, should have pickled it a little bit longer. And what I actually can do if I want to is I can um, take some sandpaper to that as well. Yay! Compliments on your jewelry by random strangers are always the best. Okay, so now it's time to set my stone. Um, so it's up to you how crazy you want to be about cleaning out the inside there. I'm usually, like I said, if I've got a stone that's opaque or mostly opaque, I usually don't bother. So my stone is going to drop into my bezel. Now if there's any, any thought in your head that this stone might not fit in this bezel before you put it in there, put a piece of dental floss across your bezel and then put your stone in that way. If it doesn't fit, you can pop your stone out. Now, if you didn't do that, because sometimes we forget these things, there is still a fix for that. Like say I put this in and it just, it wouldn't go in, you know, wouldn't go level. Um, you could actually drill a hole in the back of your bezel and use a, an awl or a solder pick to poke your stone out. Of course, then you are stuck with a hole in the back of your bezel, but at least your stone's not stuck in there half caddy, wampus, and crooked. Mine, however, is in there nice and level. So now I'm going to set it with my prong pusher that I just went to get. So my prong pusher is just this um, little piece of metal that um, comes on a handle. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to use that to lay my bezel down over my stone. So I'm going to work my four corners, or my four compass points, I should say. And then I'm going to work the corners, which are the hardest. Okay, and then I'm just going to start going around, and I'm sorry, I can't have that on there anymore. I'm just going to start going around and around and around until I've got this bezel laid down on my stone. Now, since your bezel is one interconnected piece of metal, what you're going to find, and you can kind of see it happening there, it's like, I push that side and that side comes out. I push this side and the other side comes out. So you really have to, first of all, it takes, it takes a lot more actual strength in pushing than I thought when I was first learning how to do this. I would never roll my bezels because I couldn't ever get them rolled nicely. And the reason for that was I wasn't push. I literally wasn't pushing hard enough. So it takes a fair amount of, of oomph to get that down and it also takes some work it's like it's not just once or twice around sometimes it's five or six or seven times around because what you're basically doing is you're taking a flat piece of metal and you're convincing it that it wants to curve over your stone okay, so once you've got that down completely over your stone to where there's no air space no ugly looking bits like that. If you have one handy, you can take a burnisher. And um, you can actually take your burnisher and you can burnish down that edge. And so what that does when you burnish it down is you can see it gives you just a little bit of shine and it smooths it out. Um, now this is something that I only usually do on bigger stones. On smaller stones it's a really a little bit more difficult because there's just not that much space. So this is probably the first time you've ever seen me burnish down an edge and that's why.
but it does make for a nice finish. Alright, and then I am going to take a second and go back in with my steel wool. Now that I can get a little bit better on that bezel, and I'm just going to steal a little that bezel a little bit more. Okay, and so we totally could just bend this wire, make a bale, and call it done. But we are going to just embellish this with a wee bit of wire wrapping and a few beads before I let you all go for the night. So. I'm, now I'm going to go with my 26 gauge gold filled wire and I'm going to cut myself about two and a half feet of that and then from that two and a half feet I'm just going to cut myself off a piece that's about three four inches and that's what I'm going to use to wire wrap my garnet here. Oh good. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, I'm sorry, what? Okay, I'm sorry, there must be a photo posted in Discord of that, because just the, just the phrase, I have, I have a bunch of unicorns that need mini graduation caps that need to be finished. I'm sorry, I need visual aids. That's just, my brain cannot process that without some kind of photograph. So I'm going to wire out my top drilled teardrop. So I'm just going to put my wire through there, bend it up to make my triangle, bend my wire straight up, and then wrap my short one around my long one. And I just want to do that about, it's always easier for me if I do it with my fingers, about one and a half to two times. Like so. I see, I still require photographic evidence. All right, so there's that. Now I'm gonna do my basic wire wrap loop and I don't need to attach this to anything because I'm going to attach it when I do my embellishment in a minute. So we're gonna go away, rotate, back up over the top, rotate underneath. That makes my lady with a scarf, and now I'm going to wrap down till I meet the end that's already there. Um, so if if you so Megan has a good question. Um, is there any any you know help if you break off the top of the top drilled stone and um, the answer to that is generally not really if your stone is big enough you can actually glue it into a cap or you could set it but yeah most of the time it's just dead which is very sad especially if it's a nice stone okay so now I've got my beads handy I've got my top drilled stone handy, and I've got the rest of my 26 gauge wire handy, so all I'm going to do is start my wire by wrapping it around this 18 gauge stick a few times. Oh, there you go. Get a cute little bottle and put the down pipers in it. That's a brilliant idea, not surprisingly, from Heather. So then I'm going to take my wire and I'm just going to bring it round the outside of my bezel and then bring it round that piece of wire and then I'm going to go the other way bring it around the outside of my bezel and bring it around my wire at this point this wire is probably stable enough that I can go ahead and cut this off and then oh my gosh what did cool okay I'm sorry 
I have to stop and look at Corvus's mini unicorns pictures and then I shall finish this project. Maybe? Why is Discord not showing me the unicorns? I don't know. Which channel are they on? Chat. Chat. Ah. Oh my god. Corvus, those are amazing. Okay, let's finish up this project so that Corvus can get back to her unicorns. And yes, if anybody else wants to see the unicorns, you can join our Discord. Um, Ace just put the address up in the Twitch chat. So we're going to go around and around. So when I start getting kind of short on wire, which I am right now, is when I'm going to go ahead and add my beads. So I'm going to string onto my wire enough beads to go around the outside. So as you can see, that's not nearly enough. So how many beads you need for this is totally, it's going to depend on your uh, cabochon, how big it is. Okay, and by string enough beads to go halfway around, I really meant string enough beads to go all the way around. My head was getting projects confused. I went totally to a different project place there for a moment. So I'm stringing on enough of my beads to go all the way around my cabochon. Oh no, no I'm not. Sorry y'all. There is a reason. My brain was right, it didn't even know it. You want to string enough beads to go halfway around, and then you want to string on your teardrop. I swear I know what I'm doing, people. So that your teardrop is going to sit right down there at the bottom of your pendant, and then you're going to string on enough beads to continue around the other half of your pendant. I swear. Sorry, y'all. Sometimes the, the brain actually knows less than, than, you know, just like the, the mouth that's running. And then the brain tries to get involved. It's like, wait, wait, no, that wasn't right. Yes, but yes, it actually was. So I, yeah, that should bring up the whole discord, Megan. And Corvus posted the unicorns in the Beating Dreams chat channel. I was looking for them in the Project Photos channel, so that's my bad. Heather fixed me. She learned me. So, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and just wrap that off. So, three, four times around should be sufficient. I can go ahead and trim that off and press it down like so. And then the last thing we need to do is make some place for or some way for this to hang. And we're going to do that by turning this top wire into a basic wire wrap loop, which is going to, of course, start with our round nose pliers, which are trying to eat some of the beads from last night's sale. So we're going to place our round nose pliers so that they are touching 
the top of all of that work we just did and we're going to go away, rotate, back up over the top, rotate, underneath, that makes our lady with a scarf and then we're going to hold across and wrap and I'm just going to continue to wrap down until I meet the end of my wrap that's already there. Um, if it's concerning to you that you know this may be kind of popping off the front, you can actually take that last wrap kind of over the front of all of that to sort of hold it in place a bit more. That's totally valid. Um, you also, if you want to, can take some of these other wraps and just kind of gently bump them out and that's going to help hold that in place as well. Once you're done with your wrapping, go ahead and trim your end and press down because no pokey stabbies on the beating dream stream. We don't like the pokey stabbies. And there you go. That is your embellished bezel set pendant. So not a two hour stream. I did actually successfully finish the project this time. I'm very happy with that. So yeah, really fun, fun project. And once again, you can totally stop at just the bezel setting, but adding that little bit of wire embellishment to it is, is loads of fun. So that's it for the Beating Dreams Torch Thursday stream. Um, don't forget tomorrow night is our Zoom Crafty Cocktail Time. That means you will not find us on Facebook. You will not find us on Twitch. You will find us on Zoom. Um, Heather sent out the email with all the credentials if you've Zoomed with us before. Our credentials are the same as they have always been. So that's going to be from 6 to 8 tomorrow. Come when you want, leave when you want. And we'll be back on this channel twitch.tv forward slash beading dream on Friday with a macrame and beads project that's going to be our honeycomb bracelet which is this one um really really fun um really really fun so um lots of uh cool things to learn with that so uh anyway apparently I'm gonna need to go beat up a mouse so everyone have a great night and we'll see y'all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream Saturday at 6 p.m. But um, we will hopefully see you all also on Zoom tomorrow. Everyone have a good one. Good one. Bye.